So here I want to do a quick uh, demonstration of uh, robot structure analysis. So this is an Autodesk product. So it's Autodesk Robot Structure Analysis Professional 2019. I'm uh, using. So do a demonstration of how to create a truss uh, within it, then robot. So I'm going to create a new project. So once I open up the, the package, uh, I will then have an option to open an existing project or a new project. I'm going to click on a new project. Depends on uh, which one I pick here in terms of the, the template. It helps to set up the template to make it easier for me to navigate through. So, for example, if I was doing a 3D uh, building, I could put the building design one. In this case, I'm going to have a 2D truss, and it's a truss 2D design. What that does, it sets up the interface uh, for me. Uh, so, all the time we have the blue uh, in the middle here is the, uh, is the drawing space uh, in there. Uh, on the left here, we have the uh, object uh, inspector. So if I had building design here, I would have stories in here to, that I could have it, story one, story two, story three of the building, and so on. Um, and I have on the right hand side here, I have a lot of icons that I can uh, uh, select uh, different things into, more icons on the top, uh, and then the menu bar at the very top. So, uh, so in terms of the drawing space, we have the ruler on the top. So this is in meters, so zero meters, five meters, ten meters, and so on. On the bottom left, we can see that we have the axis, the x-axis uh, facing to the right, uh, z-axis facing up the way, and uh, y-axis into the page. So because we're dealing in 2D, we won't need to worry about the y-axis in this case. In there. Also on the top right-hand side here, we see we have the little icon here where we're looking at the front face. We could look at the the right, look from the left, top, and bottom of the model. We can spin it around, we can look at it in 3D, and we can always come back to the home. So in this case, the home is on the front because we're looking at the 2D version. So when I create in my model, I can usually go on the, uh, usually use the icons on the right-hand side here because it's in order, uh, typically, of what I want to do. So I want to create a, the axis definition, so the grid lines, maybe nodes, but oftentimes I don't need to create nodes. I can go straight into pairs and actually use a library a structure to build my, my structure, which is what I'm going to do uh, in part of this demonstration. It can change the different sections, sizes that I want, cross section shapes, put material properties, put supports on, define the look uh, conditions, apply the loads. Um, we can have a use a wizard there to apply wind loads uh, and, and snow loads. Uh, and then we have lots of other more complex structural definition here. If I open that up, I've got lots of other options in there like releases, uh, supports, I can rotate the section uh, and its length and so on in there. And also we can uh, design the member uh, as part of this. So robot is an analysis package, but also is a design package in there. The very first thing I do before I start any project is go up to tools uh, and into preferences. And here is where I change the preferences. So really you only need to do this once uh, because once you set these preferences it's going to be that's the preferences for your, for your computer so for example the language so which regional setting so i usually have Eurocode uh, in here if i was in uh, the uk i would have great britain italy uh, uh, um, Italia, uh, and so on in there so that's going to default uh, which the design codes that we're going to default towards they work in language in english print out in english so for example i know people that would have they would use the working language as Polish. Um, and uh, so that means everything around the screen is in Polish. But then they leave the printout in English. So when they're creating the reports and so on, uh, that is all in English. Uh, general parameters don't only change, view parameters, uh, desktop settings. So again, if we if, if we prefer a different look, so instead of having a blue background, we might want to have a pink background or a like green background. So we can change the look of that. We can change the pointer uh, and so on. In it. Typically, don't change many things in here. Some of the things where, where you might want to change is the printout parameters, for example. So to make sure that um, your printout, similar to other uh, printouts within the company, so to make sure you follow your ISO, quality control, quality assurance procedures. So we might want to change uh, some of the uh, colors, the fonts, uh, maybe the symbols that we use, like, for example, dimension type symbols, um, dash lines or solid lines, uh, line thicknesses, and so on. So my recommendation is that somebody in the office would set up this, put standard and put the company's uh, name underneath it, and then use that uh, all the time then uh, for each of the computers. So then I can find the, uh, that standard by opening up the preferences. I could find standard and whatever the name of the standard is for my company. Um, find that and open it up on this computer. As I said, you only need to do that once. 
uh, for, for a computer, then it stays in that one computer. However, job preferences need to be set up for every job. But again, what I would uh, suggest is that you have uh, you set up uh, one uh, properly, and then you can open that again. So for example, I can go into open job preferences, and here's one I set up previously for myself. And then all of the uh, defaults that I set up in the previous project would uh, come into this project as well. This will save you having to redo it every time. So if I just go through each of these units and uh, formats, so how many decimal places? That's in one decimal place. Default units, so we're going to use metric or imperial. So we're in Europe here, we're going to use metric. Uh, in terms of dimensions, structural dimensions in meters. So we can see that up on the screen here that we've got uh, five meters, 10 meters, 15 meters, and so on. I could change that and work in feet or work in millimeters. Section dimensions, this is a cross-sectional um, shape, height of the section and width of the section and so on. They're in centimeters and millimeters. Some people like to work in millimeters, others in centimeters. Uh, section properties um, in there, so like your um, second moment of area, like uh, just plasticity and so on, whether it's in centimeters or millimeters or so on. Uh, steel connection dimensions here is in millimeters. The diameter of the reinforcement here is in millimeters. Again, some people like to work in centimeters here. Millimeters, and then it says it's to one decimal place. Maybe you don't need one decimal place, so click on the left arrow back down to zero decimal places there. Reinforcement area could be millimeter squared, could be centimeter squared, and so on. So on millimeter squared, I think I don't need one decimal place. I can bring it down to zero. This is crack width in millimeters. Force, um, for example, we can use uh, kilonewtons or newtons uh, or meganewtons. Um, and how many decimal places? Well, probably one decimal place is good enough. Uh, moments, kilonewton meters. Again, we want two decimal places, probably one decimal place is enough. Stress, meganewtons uh, per meter squared. Maybe we want to change that. So dot, dot, dot. Uh, and then change the force units to newtons per millimeter squared, which is something that I would be more familiar with in terms of the unit, newtons per millimeter squared. Okay, and then two decimal places, I could leave uh, two decimal places. Uh, other ones like displacement, uh, degrees, temperature, degrees Celsius, mass, kgs, and so on. So all of those uh, have I can change the values in, and I can change the decimal places in. The standard uh, units or the SI units, meters, newtons, and kilograms, but I can change any of those um, in there as well. In terms of the materials, um, so we've choices in terms of the materials. So which Eurocode is what's set up here because I had set up in my preferences that I'm in uh, Europe from the Eurocode. But if I want to change that, say, to the British um, standard or to the French standard uh, or the Polish standard uh, or uh, US or so on, I could change uh, all of those uh, values in there as well, so the American standard. The, uh, I can modify uh, some values So uh, in here. So on the basic set, um, I've got, say, steel, S275, S355, S450, and so on. So normally what I recommend here is to set that uh, those values to match up with whatever your typical specification that you use for projects are. So, okay, so for example, S275 steel, concrete might be C3037, uh, your timber might be maybe, say, C18 uh, in there, and your aluminium and so on in there. Uh, so we don't need to really worry about these too much. The, what happens is this is the basic set so that when we create a, um, a um, member, uh, I would say a steel member, it would give it a, a steel grade of S275, but we can always change that to a different steel grade later on if we need to be. In terms of modifications, um, what can we do in modifications? Uh, so we have uh, in the steel, we have all the different grades of steel. So say S275, you can see there the different values, Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, the shear modulus, um, value, the specific weight, and, and so on uh, in there. So uh, they're all the default properties, uh, but we can modify those at any, at any time. So I could modify, for example, the Poisson ratio, or modify the Young's modulus in there. So you can see here as I'm clicking on the different cells, they're turning green. That's the default in robot. Whenever the cell is active, uh, it's green. Same thing with the concrete properties. So if I look at C3037, you can see the Young's modulus is 33,000, Poisson's rating 2, shear modulus, a specific weight, and so on. Um, and as you uh, would expect, as I change the different uh, strength of the concrete, the Young's modulus will change as well in the shear modulus. Whereas if I uh, Look at uh, steel, for example, it's the same Young's modulus for all the different properties of steel. Um, 
and concrete is well another important thing is when we're looking at the characteristic strength we're looking at the cylindrical strength or the or, or the cube strength uh, in there so it depends on uh, where you are and there's all that they're all things to watch out for obviously then timber has a lot more uh, properties in terms of its strengths about bending axial transverse axial compression and so on okay i want to change those uh, then in terms of the databases one well, important place here lots of different databases already preloaded up if we look at the steel and timber sections the European database. Uh, I usually add a new database in here, the Chorus database, which is basically the blue book that we use in Ireland and the UK uh, for UK B sections, UK C sections, so universal beams and universal columns. I can add that by clicking on the uh, little icon here with the uh, plus on it, um, add new database to the list. Uh, so I can go to the American one, uh, one, but I'm going to go to the Chorus one here, which is the UK one, the book. Okay, and then click on. Okay, and that will add that in. So I can see that database now is added into the into the list available uh, to me. So vehicle or loads is zero code one. Again, I can add different ones into it. Uh, loading standards zero code one. Building soils, bolts, anchor bolts, reinforcing bars zero code two. E in nineteen ninety two, uh, and wire mesh. Look at the design codes. Uh, so in the design codes that's available to me, so for the steel aluminium structures. Uh, in 1993 part 1 2005 so because i picked your code at the very start it would give me that if i picked british then it would give me uh, the bs in as a default one so i can decide uh, which one to use it's important to obviously pick the code uh, for whichever uh, jurisdiction that you're uh, that you're working in um, so unfortunately there's no irish one available here so i have no ise in um but i would pick the standard e in one but i can check then see what the uh, parameters are in there by clicking the dot 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 button to the right there. If I click the dot 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 button. I've got the different flags on the left hand side here. So I've got the euro code um, default values in there, where I have the um, uh, the different values for um, coefficients. So gamma m zero one, so that's um, bending. We're saying for axial load and so on. M uh, gamma m one. Uh, is 1.25 gamma or sorry, it's one gamma m2 is, is 1.25 so they're the default values look at the uk version of that uh, similar except for gamma m2 they've reduced down the value to 1.1 instead of 1.25 yeah. um look in denmark actually so if i look at denmark uh they've taken the values a lot higher the partial fat saves it a lot higher so it's 1.1 uh, 1 .1 for gamma m0 1.2 for gamma m1 1.35 for gamma M2. So let's say 1.35 gamma M2 compared to in the UK, they've taken as 1.1. Uh, the recommended value from the euro code is 1.25. So a big difference, recommended value for gamma M0 is 1, whereas in Denmark they've taken 1.1. So effectively, if I design in Denmark using the exact same sections in Denmark as I uh, would use in, say, Ireland, for example, I have 10% less capacity available to, so I have to reduce down. The bending capacity by 1.1, the axial capacity of a member by 1.1. I suppose it's Denmark that the concern is there's more variability uh, in terms of the strength and the materials that they're getting, uh, whereas uh, I suppose the default value in Europe is saying that uh, whatever the nominal value is uh, for the yield strength, that's the um, that's the, de the definition. That is the minimum yield strength of the, of the steel. Uh, so therefore, they say that they're 100% certain that we'll not get steel that is uh, less than that the nominal value. Whereas in Denmark, they're a bit more concerned and say, well, actually, there's a chance we'd get steel that's less than that. And I'm in value, so we're going to put a 1.1 factor in there. Okay, so we need to be careful of those and check check all of those uh, in there. Um, so I'm not going to do all of them individual, but steel connections is the same. Design into EN 1993 part 1, part 8, um, which will be the value. And again, we can check what all the, um, the different parameters are to make sure that we're happy with We can always user define our own and change any of the values in here that we, that we want okay. uh so same thing for uh for concrete structures in 1992 part one part one in there and we change the parameter in terms of the loads so the load combinations uh, in 1990 2002 if i click on the dot 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 in, uh button here to the right hand side i'll bring up the dialog box uh, which has all of the um, co-defined regulations uh, in there it's just not coming up on my screen here in front of you, but effectively, has, if you click on that, it gives you all the equations uh, there, all of the um, 
pressure factors of safety for the different load combinations uh, in there. So uh, you can check to see that you're happy with that by clicking on the right on button there. Okay. Um, Snow loads, so we've got the uh, national tournament parameters in, in Ireland in there for our snow loads, but if we're in a different country, we can change that to a different country. Um, and seismic loads, Euro code 8 uh, in there. Again, we can set set that as we need to be. In terms of structural analysis, so these, the rest of these don't really change. Um, model analysis, nonlinear analysis, and seismic analysis, uh, we're not here, uh, but we can change all of those. And the meshing, we can change as well, for example. So as I said, it's a the structural analysis package does a full finite element analysis, so we can change the different element properties in there. As we're going to just do a stick model, it's not as uh, important in this analysis. So I click OK for that. As I said, before I click OK, in terms of default, I would change that to default and call it my company name or my name uh, so that I can uh, come back to it again and, and not have to reset it all up again uh, for the next project. So I can just open a job preference for the next project. I click OK. Okay, so we've set, set up the, the, the job. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use um, the wizard now to, to be able to create it. So I'm going to go into the library structure because I'm going to create a, a think for us. So I'm going to the library structure. Uh, and there's so lots of different um, uh, database, uh, structural databases available to me, whether it's beams, uh, multi-story buildings, uh, frames, various different types of, of trusts and so on. I can go in here to get uh, uh, more uh, ones. Uh, and I have different types of trusses. And actually, I've also got plates and shells as well. So all of these are different um, uh, default that allow us to, um, uh, to help to, to quickly build a model. So I'm going to go to the additional database, go to, into the bottom uh, last um, square here, the very bottom, bottom right. I'm going to use this one for my uh, Fink truss. Okay. So then that will bring up a dialog box. I'll bring up a dialog box here. So what's great about uh, Robot, if you can see uh, in Robot, you can see that you have um, um, uh, an image there of what, uh, what all the different parameters are. So length one, length two, uh, height one, and height two. Um, I meant to spell it a little bit wrong. But, so L1, so we we'll click L1 in. Uh, we can change that. So we can see in the diagram just above it what L1 means. So we're going to make that as a 10 meter overall length. And in the middle section there, we can make that would say four meters. The height of the section, we can make it two meters. Uh, and H2, uh, we make that zero meters. Okay. So, what we're doing there is we're saying, well, we're going to just make the bottom cord flat. We're not going to have it lifted up like on the diagram above. And then the number of fields uh, in there, in this case, we're going to set it as four. What does four mean? Uh, it means that that top cord uh, is divided up uh, into four uh, different segments. And we don't want the cord to be continuous. We want it to be all individual elements in between each of the different connection points in there. So click no. We want to have uh, more releases everywhere. In other words, we only want to have axial loads in our members uh, in there. So that's the geometry over set up. Next, click next, and we can go on the sections. Uh, and here we have all the different um, section um, shapes available to us. Um, so these are the ones that are already loaded up, uh, for example, uh, in here. And the gamma angle uh, and the angle that's in. So I'll we'll come back to those a little bit later. If I want to ch change any of those, I click the dot, dot, dot button, uh, and then I can go into the database. So as I said, I, I set up the course database, and I can pick a different uh, section in here. Okay, so I can pick a UKB, for example, uh, and pick a section and, and change that section uh, in here. Okay. So I'm not going to go and through all those because we don't really know um, what sections we need yet at this stage. So I'm just going to leave whatever's in there uh, for, for, for now, and I can show you how to change that later on. And then we're going to click Next. Uh, and then next, we're going to insert the uh, insert this truss somewhere into the model. So I'm going to insert it at 0, 0, 0. Uh, scale, I can scale it up whatever I want. So for example, I drew it as a 10 meter span truss, but I could say, oh, actually, I want that to be scaled by 2, and it could be a, a 20 meter span uh, truss in there. Okay, so then I'm going to click OK. And there's the truss um, I built. Okay, so there's the truss built. I can see as I hover over any member, it's giving me what the um, uh, what the the bar number is. Uh, so that's bar seven, bar eight, bar twenty one, and so on all the way down. If I look at the bottom of the screen, um, down here at the very bottom of the screen here, you can see the section size. So that's actually the default section size. If I draw another member, it'll be an IPE one hundred. Uh, because that's the section size that's set up at the moment over there. If I go over to the 
our section, click on that. You can see IP100 is set up here. If I click on a different one, uh, for example, IP305, close that. That means that if I look at the bottom of the screen here, close to the right, I can say UKB305 by 127.48. by uh, 48. Uh, So that tells me that that's going to be the section that I'm, uh, if I draw a new, a new member, that's the section it's going to, so the default section is going to create. Okay, so as I hover over the member, as well as highlighting down in the bottom, highlights what the, so if I look at the blue at the bottom, I see it's 22. 22 there, down the bottom here is going to be 22. And uh, that's the R number. Uh, in the next uh, uh, place down, down at the bottom, it's going to tell me what the number um, section is. So it's, in this case, it's the MIPE 240. And then over here to the second right uh, on the bottom, I can see that the length of it. So in this case, the length four meters. On the very bottom right, I can see that it's meters, kilonewtons, and degrees. I might want to also see what the 3D uh, shape of that looks like. So if I go down to the very bottom, uh, where all the little yellow icons are, so bottom left, all the yellow icons, I can see the middle one says section shapes. I click on that one, and then I can see the different uh, section shapes. So I can see that the, that the top member is very big relative to the bottom member. Uh, and the smaller numbers are, are smaller in between. In there. So it's kind of useful uh, graphically uh, to turn that on. So I can turn that back off again or on it at any moment. So I'll turn it off. Now, I see here on my trust that actually this diagonal, I really wanted to go um, not that way. I wanted to go from node 2 up to node 8. So I can see uh, it's, there, it's not going the right way. Maybe if I turn on the different, so up in the top and go view, uh, display. And then I'm going to look at the node numbers, and I also want to look at the bar number, so bar description. I just want to look at the bar number. Okay. I click apply that. So I can see the node numbers are in red, and the bar numbers are in black. Okay. So I can see bar one, uh, one, two. When I click on anything, uh, the left button is going to turn into blue. So I've clicked and it's turned into blue. I can see that goes from node seven to uh, node uh, three. But actually, I want to go from node two uh, to node eight. So after I click on on, on an element, I click on that element. On the left hand side of the screen here, uh, bottom left hand side, I can see the dialog box associated with that member. So it's a simple bar a structure uh, in there. Its length is 1.78 meters. It goes from node 3 to node 7. Um, its section type is a DCED uh, 50 by 5. Um, uh, it's a steel uh, section, material properties are steel, and so on in there. So I want to say, well, actually, I wanted that to go from node 2 to 8 instead of 3 to 7. So I'll change that 3, that dialog box to 2, and change the 8. I'm sorry, this the 7 and 8. And I can see then on the screen that I've now turned it the other way around. I'm going to say with 113, instead of going from 3 to 9, I want to go from 4 to 8. So I changed uh, on the left hand side here, node 1 to 4, uh, and node uh, 2 to 8. And I can see it's nicely uh, changed on the screen. So I can do the same on the other side. 213, instead of going from eight, 12 to 18, I want to go from 13 to 17. Over the left hand side here, go 13 to 17. I can see that change. And 212, bar 212, I want that to go from 11 to 17 instead of from 12 to 16. Okay. So now that's the geometry uh, done all right. Uh, so when I click on any of these members, I can see that this material is called steel. What does steel mean? Well, I want this uh, uh, bank truss to have uh, um, to be made from S275 steel. So I'm going to just click with the left button, drag, hold on to it, and drag over everything. And I click on everything. So I have all the members uh, selected there. And then I want to change that material. So on the right hand side, where I have all the different uh, material types, sorry, all the different icons, I can click on material. You see materials there on the right hand side. Click on that icon. Uh, and then I, I get up the different material uh, types in there. So I can get S275, S235. So I can see what the different materials are. Uh, so for example, S275. Then I can apply it to whichever section. So if I click on the uh, DCE uh, 50 by 50, I hold the shift button and I click down onto the last one and I apply all of those sections. Click apply. Um, it's telling me that the material of some members made with this differs from the default one. That's okay. 
I've changed it, yeah. This is asking me that. Two times now I can see that I've changed uh, for all of these different section sizes and the material property is 275. Click OK. I can see that then if I click on any member, again looking down on the left hand menu for it, I can see the material there is S2775. And if I wanted to change it again, I can click on it over on the left uh, and I can change any to any uh, different material uh, that's available. To me. That's all the material uh, properties uh, in there uh, for the section. Uh, and again, I can change the section sizes as well. So if I click on that bottom member. I can see the section uh, size there, uh, and I can change that section to a different one. The limited number of sections available to me, but I can go up um, go to the uh, section um, dialog box here on the right-hand side, bar sections, click on that, and I can load up any new one. So I want to size a couple of T sections there, the DCEs, an IPE one, got a UKB in that. If I click on the, if I leave it on the UKB, I can click on the new section definition, uh, then a new a dialog box comes up for the new section, and then I'm in the course database or the European database, whichever one I want. And then in there, I can put the family of sections, so UKB. Maybe I want to put a, a, a T section uh, in there, so UT, UKB. This is a T section, so structural T is cut from um, universal beams uh, in there. Maybe I want to add that, uh, which is a small uh, member. Maybe I want to add a different, a bigger size. Uh, for example, add that so I can see them all being added up here in there. So close that. Then maybe I'll um, so I have the sections here. I can at the moment it's saying added. I have got line bars 22 selected here because I have 22 on the bottom. So if I say apply at the 76 one on that, it will be applied to 22. I also want to apply it to 1, 2, 15, and 14. So I can see the bar numbers there. So type in 1. 16, 14, that, I can see it's applied to all of those. Um, okay, the other one, the UKB uh, 146, I can apply it graphically, so I could click on any one of these members, for example, uh, member 18, and I can see that it's applied it graphically. Another way to, uh, to do it, instead of going on click, 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 um, so let me look at, the, look at the section shapes again, so if I go to view, I display uh, and I want to look at the shapes and section shapes so the section shapes there click on that apply that okay so I can see the section section shapes in there so maybe I also want to view uh, the section shape the colors of the sections uh, so I can mark with color so what's I went up to a uh, view display uh, mark with colors and then I want to mark the section by colors click on that Click OK. So I can see there that all the different colors for the different sections. And on the bottom right, uh, I can see uh, a color code in there. Okay, so I want to say change those top ones instead of having them UKBs. I want to change them into a, a, a T section. Uh, as for my example. So I want to change into a T section. So I can do a smart selection in this. So instead of having to go around and click on each one and say, well, everything that's a, a UKB, I want to turn that into a, into a T section. It's a 146. On the top left of the screen, uh, here you can have a little icon called bar selection. Okay, so top left you see a little bar selection. Uh, so it's a bar with a question mark above it. Click on that one. That says uh, is a smart kind of selection tool. I want to select a bar. So I've got bar as a drop down menu, but also a node and other things as well I can use. So a bar in there. Um, what attribute do I want? So it could be section, it could be material properties, it could be lots of different properties. In this case, section is what I want. Then I want to find any UKB. So I'm clicking on the UKB and I'm going to click the arrow up there with the plus button. So arrow up there with the plus button. Now I can see that I've selected all those members 5, 6, 7, 8, 19, 20, 21. And also I can see on the top uh, left here with the little uh, box, um, I can see that I have 5 to 8 and 19 to 21. So that's what I've currently selected. So that's good. That's what I wanted to select. Uh, now I'm going to change those. Uh, members. So if I click on the bar sections, the dialog box, and I want to change those members to a 146 by uh, 127 by 22. So the arrow is pointing at that one. Um, so that's good. So the arrow is pointing at it. And then it's telling me down in the dialog box here uh, underneath that it's going to apply to 5 to 8 and 19 to 21 because that's what I've selected 
uh, up here. So that's what I want. So click apply. There we go. There's all the top cord that turned into a, 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 um, a T section. Okay, so that's good. Uh, and then we can see that we have angle sections here internally. Um, it's a, a, a 50 by 5 and a, and a 60 by 5 uh, in here. We can again change any of those sections that we want. Um, so if I want to select, say, the 60 by 5, uh, click up, and then I can see I have them selected there. Okay, so that's a very handy dialog box to, 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 uh, um, to be bringing up to help select things. And then I might want to look in just 3D just to make sure is it, are they all faced the right way. That's a T section there. The top, that's a T section at the bottom, faced the right way. Yeah, I want to flatten the meat so it's easy to click on the ceiling onto it. Flatten the top so it's easy to click on the purlins onto it. Uh, I have these uh, sections. Am I happy with the with the direction there? If I'm not, I can turn them a different direction uh, in there, uh, and so on. So this is kind of useful to have a list uh, in these directions. Actually, these are T sections. Yeah, angle section. These are T sections. So in our example, we want to turn them into the angle sections. I want to go back to the front. Just on the top right, I'm just going to click on the little front where it says front on the on the cube. I'll bring the, the back up to the front. Okay, so maybe I'll change those internal members uh, in there. Uh, so click on the new database. And I've got the database up. Uh, I'm on a chorus database, which is what I want. And I want to have an angle section. So UK uh, equal angle, so UK AEQ. Um, so it's an equal angle um, in there. So it tells me what it is. And then I can change the parameters. So let's just put in a 30 by 30 by 3, add that. And uh, something bigger, 45 by 45. Add that. Okay. There, there. One thing to be aware of, obviously, so if I look at a UKB, 305 by 127 by 48. 48 is the mass in kilograms per meter. So the, the smaller we can make that last number, the better. Uh, same thing for the UK and uh, for the uh, UK T section, 76 by 64 by 7, so it's 7 kilograms per meter. So the smaller that number is, the lighter the structure is going to be, the lighter the structure. Uh, the cheaper it is to, to, to find. In terms of the angles, 30 by 3 means it's 30 leg one way, uh, 30 leg the other way. In terms of dimensions, 30 millimeters, 30 millimeters, and 3 millimeters. Okay, so I might want to, uh, again, I'll bring up this um, advanced bar selection. So top left where I have the bar with the question mark above it, bar selection. Uh, and I'm going to pick a section that is the uh, 60 by 5. Pick that up. I'm going to put in that uh, in the selection sections one and bring up that dialog box now. And I'm going to put a UK equal angle of 45 by uh, 5. By that. Um, and then I want to, in the advanced selection dialog box on the right, I'm going to select the other uh, DCED, the 50 by 5. That's now selected. The selection dialog box, I can see now the lines are all those uh, bars um, selected. And I want to put in at as the smaller equal angle, 33. By that, close that. Okay. Now, I'm going to keep saving this as I'm going along. So press uh, save. Uh, so, close. Simple. That was a long time going without saving it. So, make sure you press save and then keep pressing um, Control S all the way along. Okay, so we have a, a structure uh, built uh, in there. I'm going to close that. Uh, that Okay, so what do we need to do now? We need to put some supports on that structure to make sure that it doesn't that it stays where it needs to stay. On the right hand side here, that little supports dialog box um, down, so the eight down from the top. Click on supports. And I've got different options available to me. So I'm going to put a pin on one side. It's a pin support, so I click it on the pin, and then I'm going to go graphically and apply it. So I graphically under my node one there, you see the blue uh, circle around it, so I know that I'm selecting that one. Click on it, and there's the little pin on, on, on the start. Okay. On the other side, I might want to have a pin free. But what does pin free mean? I'm not sure. If I double click where it says pin free, the left hand mouse, uh, then it gives me up the dialog box here. And it tells me that pin free means, in terms of the rigid tab, um, that it's fixed in the Z direction, so it can't go up or down, but it's free to go left or right. There's other options I can have here, more advanced options. I say, well, I could let it go to the right, but not go to the left. Uh, in there in the same in terms of up and down, I can let it go up but maybe not down. Various different structures you might want to have that. Uh, we can have all sorts of springs in there, elastic 
a support conditions that might mimic a foundation or another structure that's going on to friction gaps we have a non-linear connection and so on we're going to just keep this nice and simple have a rigid connection this is what i want uh, where i can't i don't want to move uh, up or down but i want to be able to move left and right because the pins uh, so everything is pinned uh, this is free to rotate as well so pin free and that's node 10 on the end so i can click on it or i can type in here node 10 at the bottom click apply it should be applied there let's double check is it there there it is there sorry there's node 10. okay so now we have a, a structure uh, now you see that um the it looks like the supports have disappeared but actually they haven't disappeared the supports it's just that they're um uh, it's just that they're not turned on if we want to view them so i can view display uh, and i can look at the support to leave the support symbols on up here click okay okay so they're there just so if i wasn't sure they're in there or not where are we at so for save there uh, where are we at now we've created the, the geometry we've we've set the bar sections as we needed them um, actually using that wizard just be careful when you're using the wizard because if you pick the bar sections and you try to put in those equal angles and uh, T sections in that bar wizard, it doesn't like them. So better just to use the default that are in there to start off with and then change the bar sizes later on. Okay, so that's just a word of warning uh, using some of those wizards in there. It's a little glitch in the wizard. We've uh, set the material property so it's all S275 steel. We put some support conditions on it. Now we need to define what the load types are next. So we're moving down to these icons on the right hand side of the screen. We're designing, defining what the load types are. So click on the, that icon, I'll have the load types. So here we have what's the nature of the load. I can have a dead, live, snow load, wind load, temperature, accidental load, and uh, seismic load. So lots of options there for us. We want to set a uh, dead load. So we usually use uh, D for the dead load. In there, label it as dead load one. Uh, in there, it's structural in nature. Dead load. We can also have a non structural dead load in there. So for example, a, a sad system it can be a dead load, but it's non, non structural uh, in terms of it doesn't. Um, by visibility to the system. So G of K, add that. So we can see low case that uh, should pop in here. So we have low case one of G of K. Low case two, we can have that as a live or the imposed load. We call that uh, G of K, the label of it, uh, live load one. And then the nature, uh, so we have category A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So all these live loads we can have one of different categories. Uh, so we'll just leave this one as category A for a Q of K. Add that. And then we put a wind load case in there. So a wind load, we call that QW. Um, and we call this uh, WL1. And add uh, that as well. So three load cases, we have a dead load, a live load, and a, and a wind load. And we'll stick those there. And any time we can modify those as well or add new ones into it. So you can see those in this uh, menu up the top, G of K, uh, Q of K, and W of K. So whichever of these are active, when I start to add loads in, whichever are active here is the one that it's the low case is going to add it under. So I'm going to give K at first. I'm going to put the, a load in there. So I'm going to define a load. So up to the right hand menu again. Uh, we have the uh, load types. Next thing is load definition. So I'll click on the load definition. I'm clicking on the load definition. I can apply it to the node. Uh, so these are the nodes uh, in between. I can also apply a load to a bar. A bar a member so you can see like that like uniform distributed load to a member i can also have the self weight of the system in there and i can put a, like a lump mass onto a node as well uh, to represent some sort of mass that's coming from somewhere onto it in this case we're just going to apply loads onto the nodes and so we've got um, the first a little box in there or a little square is the node and force which we click on that uh, and then the node force so what can we apply we can apply a load in the x direction in the z direction and we can also uh, put it as an angle so that the load is uh, going straight down um, in there. So let's say we have to be aware that we're also always applying the loads in the global direction here. We're applying the load in the force. Okay, so it's a global direction. So Z is pointing up the way. So we want to minus. So let's say a minus uh, two kilonewtons uh, on this point load. So two kilonewtons going down the way. Um, add that. Okay. And then we can say apply it. So I can apply it by um, clicking on the nodes. So do. Okay, so you can see it there coming out on the nodes. 
maybe the last two because it was half the roof loading going on at the very end, so it might be half of that amount, so minus uh, one kilonewton. Minus instead of two, we'll change that to one. That. Now, if we want to see, so that's the magnitude from the arrow, so it's a vector, so it's the magnitude and direct. I could turn on uh, the load description and the load symbol by clicking on the bottom of uh, the screen here where the yellow icons are, the right two are the load symbols and the load uh, description. Also, I can view display and click on loads, and then I can turn on the load symbol and the load value there, the first two, first two dialog boxes there, the load value and the load symbol. So there's the, the loads. Um, so that's one load I might want to, so that's supplied. Maybe I have, that could be uh, one load. I might have another one at an angle. So maybe I have uh, minus um, uh, three kilonewtons, and maybe that's at an angle of 15 degrees. Add that, multiply that. So we can have an angle of 15 degrees. Okay, so I see that, ooh, I put that the wrong way. Maybe it should have been minus 15 degrees. Uh, in there, so I can go and change that. I put on the load values and the load symbols there again. So I have those there. So I see that one also wrong way. Uh, so one of the easiest places I find to change things is actually change them in the tables. So if I go to um, view at tables and open up the tables and then find the table that has uh, loads. So in there, I have loads. Click on that, click OK. And then uh, up pops the loads uh, table. So I can see this load table, it's a little bit small on the screen now, but I can see that the load case is G of K. If I put it into the wrong load case, I could change that to be Q of K or W of K, so it depends on where it is. One thing to be very careful of is the first load case in the then load is always a self weight. So I didn't apply that, the robot did it itself. So it's taking into account the weight of all of the steel that's in there itself, and it's applied that in the said minus said direction. So that's good to make sure that has the self weight in. It means I don't have to apply an additional load for self weight uh, into the structure. Um, so which one was I, the one I put at an angle? So this last one was applied to node uh, seven uh, in there. So I could change that to different uh, uh, nodes if I put it to the wrong one. But it was applied at fi minus 50, or 15 degrees. And let's say I want to change that to minus 15 degrees instead. So I'll change that to minus 15. Let's go back to the view tab. I'm going to the bottom left of my screen here where I'm in the load tab. Into the view tab, and now you can see it's it's back to minus 15 degrees. Okay, so that's more like what I want to, to do with it, and that's applied to node seven. But I also want to apply to node eight, nine, uh, eight, nine, and five. We'll say, and some of the other ones: eight, nine, five, 16, 17, and eighteen. Okay, so I, I'm already at seven. Eight, nine, five. 895, let's do that first. Back to view. You can see now, oh, eight, nine, five, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Oh, it Five, eight, nine, five, five, and it was seven to nine. So I've already typed it in. Sixteen to eighteen. Plus, oh, it didn't work. Yeah. So it's not letting me change that uh, too easy. I don't know why that's not letting me apply that. Okay, so that didn't, that didn't work. Uh, the list didn't work for me for some reason. So I'll delete that one out. So I'll click with the right button. Um, i click with the left button where it is. Click delete, and then it's gone off. Okay. Go back into view. You can apply that load that I was going to apply. So no definition in here. I had it at 15. I should have come and say minus 15. 
pick add. And then I can apply it into various different nodes. Okay, uh, and then I want to apply the last one as half of that uh, one on the left hand side. So it's the three minus 1.5. Right. And on the right hand side, um, I'll have it as uh, 15 degrees because I want to face it the other direction. Add that, so that's for the very last node, 10. Back in again, uh, and then change it to minus 3. Add that, and again, I can add that to all these. Okay, and Okay, so there's uh, some nodes applied, that's some dead loads. Uh, and then again, we can do some uh, live loads. So again, apply some live load by clicking on the live load uh, tab. I'm just gonna quickly put in some loads here. So uh, some, so some loads straight down as an example. Uh, so we put a, a live load of minus, uh, say, um, four, add that. And apply that to some nodes. Okay, and then just the last one's obviously would be half the load because only half the amount of roof on it. So we have live loads. And then for um, up to the top drop down menu again and go for the wind loads, QW. I would say QW. Now, in an example, in our example, we're just going to put QW down the way. But obviously, QW, we're going to have to put it both up the way and down the way. So you'd have QW1 and QW2 in your load combinations because you might have a suction wind pressure and you might have a downward wind pressure on this. So in this case, I'll just do an example down the way. So I'm going to apply that. Um, Okay, uh, the outside one is going to be half of that. So let's do outside ones. Okay, so that's uh, that's a load applied. Save that. Okay, so we have a, a wind load of some sort applied. Uh, we have a live load applied, and we have a dead load applied. Okay, so there's there's three loads in there. Okay, so that's a, that's the loads applied. And next here will be the load combinations in there. So I want to put some load combinations in there. So the top menu here, I drop down menu to loads, which is the fifth one across, into manual combinations. So we're going to do a manual combination here. What is the load combination that we want to uh, put in? There's loads of different uh, ones that we can put in. So in this case, we put in, say, load combination one equals. Now, I could call this whatever I want. It doesn't matter. If this is just labeled for it, but I'm going to call it 1.35 UK plus 1.5. UK plus 0.75. So I could call that just lowercase one, but I like to give it the full description um, so that it's easy to see what one is. So I'll click OK on that. It's ultimate limit state. Uh, and then I can either let it default what the factors are. So if I bring them all over to the right hand side uh, with the dot, with the two arrows uh, to the right, I can see there that it has given me a factor of 1.35 times the dead, 1.5 times the live. And 1.5 times the wind. Maybe I didn't, wasn't happy with that. 1.5 times the wind. I bring that back and say I'm going to change that um, up to the um, auto value. I'm going to change that to 0 0.75 and type it in there into the green box. And then I'm going to click on the on the value and click with the uh, arrow to the right in the center there. And then that'll bring it back to 0 0.5. I can see in the factor definition that will. Um, um, from here, I can see which one to use. So click on that, and that will define which uh, the factors are. It tells me what the default factors are. Click apply. Okay, so that's the low case. So I can see that's low case uh, here, low case four. Okay, I can do an, a new one, and I'll call this low case two. G5, uh, GUK, plus 1.05. Okay. Plus at 1.5. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to bring the g of k across 1.35. g of k, I said I'm going to make that as 1.05. And q of w, I'm going to make that one as equal to 1.5. And the factor 1.5 across. Okay, so now we've got say two low combinations. Now you should do the third one. You have another win that's going up the way. So that's uh, two low combinations in there. Okay, so that's the trust built. Um, so just going to finish up uh, relatively quickly here. So we're going to have to analyze that. So we save that and we're going to analyze it. So there's a little calculator here at the very top of calculations. I'm going to run that calculator and then everything is fine. Uh, in there, so there's some warnings here telling me there's an isolated node. Do you want to continue? Yes. Uh, and at the top here, so if it's in blue, it's a warning. If it's in red, it's an error. So warnings, we could sometimes uh, get away with. It. Um, so, um, errors, we cannot. So if I click on isolated node, uh, it should highlight where the isolated node is. I cannot see it. Uh, in there, so it normally has a green uh, dot highlighting it, and it should also at the very top of the menu here should tell me where it, tell me where it is selected. But I can't see it as well, so that's fine. Leave it as it is. Now, if I look at under the different low combinations, so let's say low combination, I usually start off with UK, where it's just the basic loads. First thing I'll always do is see is the deflection in the right in the right uh, way. So, so is this a, a pin connection that's uh, not moving? This is a pin connection that can just move left or right in there. Is this deflecting down the way? Have I the loads in the right direction? So I go up into results, um, diagrams for bars, uh, and in here then I have uh, the affirmations. Click on that, uh, and then click apply. And I can see there it's deforming down under the dead load, under the live load as I click through the, the different load cases here at the top, under the wind load. Again, if I had the wind, if I had the fourth wind gone up the way, I should see the thing deflecting up the way. The deformed shape. So I can see there, and actually I can see on the right hand side here, it's sliding over to the to the right as well. So that is sliding. It's the one on the left, staying where it's supposed to stay. Okay, so I can see that that's uh, correct. I click apply. Or back, back uh, in there. Actually, an easier way here when we're looking at the results, instead of just going up to results, um, diagrams for bars, we could probably go into this little drop down menu where it says start, and now go into results because it's set up. Um, Go into results and into results. It'll set up the different uh, interface for us to make it a little bit, a little bit easier. That's a little bit easier for us to set up because we already have the diagram box up there. We've got actually the reactions down in the bottom here. And we've got the um, um, the interface window here. So obviously, a very important thing is the forces in the members. Uh, well, so uh, the next thing I would check is reactions. So click on the reactions tab in the dialog box for the reactions uh, in there click on fz uh, and say ff uh, x click apply those i normally want to have descriptions so put on descriptions in there so we can actually see what the numbers are uh, and they're the they're the the, the, for the reactions at the end okay and then we can go in through all the different code cases make sure that our reactions are right okay um so that's the reactions uh, and then the forces, so if I let this out into the forces, the forces tab, that's FX because that's axial load in the member because the member is always drawn in the X direction, local X direction, uh, and we can apply that. Before I apply that, I want to change the parameters so that it means that there's a little label on all of those. I want to differentiate between the compression and the tension part. I want to fill them in. It makes it a little bit easier to see. Back to the NTM, uh, we're losing uh, the axial load. And I might turn off the cross section shapes, turn off the cross section shapes, and maybe turn off the loads in there so it's a bit easier. So there's the uh, there's the, the, the diagram uh, where you have uh, your underneath the say, head load, uh, you've got the top uh, is going to be in compression, bottom is in tension, so everything in yellow is in tension, everything in blue is in compression as you expect. And then underneath the ultimate limits, load case, load case one, uh, we can see there. I can click over on the normalize button just to make it a little bit smaller. So on the dialog box for diagrams, click on the normal button to make it smaller. You can change diagram uh, size as a, with a plus or minus button here. Okay. Click apply, so it makes it bigger, smaller, and then normalize it again. So those are the uh, different options over there on the right hand side. Okay, so that's low case one. You see low case two, uh, the different values. So they're not usually different because I have much of different uh, loads in there. I might click on any one member, say member 19 uh, here, 
I click the right button, I click on object properties, it can tell me the properties of that of that member. So it tells me what it's a simple bar, it tells me the section size it is, it tells me the uh, material it's made from, and I can change that at any moment in time. Obviously, if I change the material or change the section size, uh, then I have to rerun my analysis again. It also can tell me the cross-sectional properties. So I can see this is a T-section uh, that's in there. I can look then at the diagram on that bar. If I click FX, that tells me that that member has got an axial load of 137.7 in there from the, from the graph at the top, but also from the little box here. I can look at the displacement of, the, of that member as well, so maximum deflection of displacement of that member. Uh, and I can do a code check as well. So I can actually design the member uh, according to the Eurocode 3, part 1, part 1. Uh, which is uh, outside of what I'm going to demonstrate uh, here in this one. That's We can actually do the full check uh, in there as well. Okay, so that gives you an idea of um, how to design a, a, a trust member um, for, um, for for trust analysis. If we want to just come back out of that now again and go back into a structural model, click into uh, start. Um, this model here is, uh, let's click on sorry, results. Diagrams for bars, turn off the diagrams, click apply. So that's back to our, our model again, our plain model uh, in there, the section sizes. Um, so that's a thing trust. If I wanted to create um, a Pratt trust, I can go into the library uh, and to um, the trusses, and then I pick one of the trusses here, like for example, uh, this one here. So this would be a Pratt trust, open that up, um, and then I have a, a, I can get a similar a dialog box comes up uh, where I can then change the length of it, the overall length of it, the height of it, the number of fields, like so how many segments are broken up into, continuous cord, no, normal rotations. Um, I can make it, a, you know, be at an inclination or I can have a, an apex in the middle of it, then the sections that I need and then insert it into my into my drawing. So that's how I would uh, create another truss, for example, a, a, um, the Pratt truss. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, useful. Uh, in terms of a demonstration of how to create a truss uh, in your robot. But obviously, if that truss, sorry, if this truss here, this Fink truss, was sitting on top of a Pratt truss, then whatever the reactions are at the end of the member, that's the point nodes that you will put into your into your Pratt truss. Okay. And again, don't forget, we can look at any time at 3D, just spin it around, look at the members, see if we're in the right uh, direction uh, in there, see what they look like. Uh, click on the front yeah, of it. And also we can go file. Uh, we can do a screen capture. Uh, so if I want to screen capture that, I can screen capture that and it keeps, keeps the uh, um, it's a screen capture that I can save and maybe use for later on. Okay, in it. I can go file. I can uh, have a printout composition. So I can print out using templates. Say all the data, all the results, and so on. So data, bring it across, uh, and the results, bring them across. So I can do standard view, bring anything across I want to uh, bring up, uh, over into it. I can simplify the printout. I create a printout, then I can save it into a Word file or into a PDF file or so on. And then, okay? that's how you could create a report directly out of Robot. Okay, so hopefully that's useful.